welcome to Fort City. My name is Adrian, and I'm glad that you are here today. If you're out there this morning, leave us a comment and let us know. We would really love to connect with you. Now today is day 21 of our 21 days of prayer. We made it, guys. It's the last day, and it's been a real blessing praying with each one of you each day, um, reading through your comments and hearing how God is speaking to you. Now our verse today for day 21 is Luke 11, 9 to 10, and it says this, So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Ask and it will be given to you. Uh, don't forget that part. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do is to eat out at good restaurants. Now, before we go on vacation, I like to look at different restaurants in the area and plan where we are going to go eat every day. And now that I really think through this, I think my behavior is probably a little bit extreme. <laughs> like I like to plan breakfast, I like to plan lunch, I like to plan dinner, I like to plan snacks, I like to plan milkshakes. Um, but anyway, when I, I am on vacation, two things that are important to me. One, I don't want to eat at a chain restaurant. And two, I don't want to eat at a place that I can eat at here in Fort McMurray. Like, no thank you. Someone please tell me that I am not alone in that. So the restaurants that I pick, they don't actually have to be fancy or expensive, but I really do appreciate um, if like multiple people have posted on Instagram really pretty pictures of their food, you know, like food in the shape of a bird or something. I am down for that. Now, I'm not an Instagram foodie. I don't post my food pictures, but I truly have an appreciation for you people who do. So thank you. Now, I like finding restaurants that do a certain dish or a certain style of food very well. And then whenever we eat there, I wanna eat what they are known for cooking well. Hear me out, like life hack, please do not go to a nice Mexican restaurant and order a pizza. Um, that just really makes it hard for people to be friends with you. <laughs> Don't go to Chef Morimoto's restaurant in Vegas and decline their house-made soy sauce. Just, no, don't do that. Don't go to say like your grandma's house and just request only craft dinner. Don't do it. Like just don't do it. You'll be missing out. Ask for what they do best. Ask for what they want to give you. Don't miss the blessing of asking. And so, here we are in church today. Um, what are we asking God for? And so let's think back to our verse and look at it. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Whatever each of us are asking God for individually, He is encouraging us to not give up or to quit asking. Ask, seek, knock. Ask God for that impossible thing that you want to happen. And maybe you don't have a pressing request that you are asking God for or bringing to God. Maybe you could ask Him to remind you of His love so that you can pass it on. Or maybe you could join me in praying the promise that says that He is able to do immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine. But can I tell you what I am praying for us as a church, especially on this 21st day of prayer? Uh, no objections, guys, come on, none? <laughs> okay, well, it's a prayer that I've stolen, but I, I feel like I'm okay with it. It's a prayer for the church of Ephesus, and it's located in the book of Ephesians. And Paul is praying this for them, and it's my prayer for us as well. So I'm gonna read these verses to you as a prayer for us as we move forward. So he starts by saying, I keep asking. He keeps on asking, notice that persistence. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation 
so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which that he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. So let's move forward into this service, into this time of worshiping together. Let's pray together that the doors would be opened for us to know God better. And that as a church, we would realize the hope and the power that God has given to us. Let's worship together. You guys, welcome to Fort City Church this morning. We are glad that you have joined us. And this morning we have a new song, a song we've never done before that we're going to play. And it might be new to you, but I'm sure you have probably heard uh, the lyrics to this song before. It's based on one of the most famous scriptures in all the Bible. So I'm going to stop talking and we're just going to do this song. Let's do it together, guys. Yeah. 
Thank you that we can come to this place, wherever we are, in our homes, in our cars, wherever it is that we have joined from this morning. And we can bring 
our troubles. And we can bring our burdens and we can bring what hurts us, what frustrates us, what angers us. We can bring it all and we can lay it at the foot of the cross knowing that you have promised to bear our burdens with us. Jesus, thank you that you are such a good God and that you love us so much that you don't let us walk through life alone, but that you have promised to walk through it with us as we go on in the rest of this service. It is my prayer that in all we do, we would lift you up and then everything we say from here on out would just lift you up and bless your name this morning. You guys, it's always good to worship with you, and uh, I'm so glad that you're here today. Uh, I want to look back a little bit in my life. Uh, when I was a kid, I I was one of those good kids. You know, my parents could trust me, but I also did a lot of stuff that if I was my own dad, I'd be pretty mad about uh, with myself. Uh, like I remember when I was a kid, I did not treat our house very well. Uh, there was a time I remember uh, my brother got a BB gun and I snuck into the basement and played with the BB gun inside and shot about a hundred holes in the wall uh, of my brother's room. Uh, just destroying the wall. I don't know what I was thinking. And then there was a time where uh, I was a little bit older at this time, I was an adult, where my toddler, Justice, got stuck in my parents' bedroom uh, of their home and he was crying and everybody was freaking out and so like an idiot, I just put my shoulder into the door and popped it off its hinges and rescued him, uh, destroying the door in the process. And then there was a time my parents asked me and my brother Nathan to build them a new fence. Uh, I was there for mostly moral support. Uh, as many of you know, I'm not very handy when it comes to building things. Uh, but we built that fence and it was very crooked. But it wasn't our house and so we didn't try very hard. Now I wish I could go back in time and tell myself and warn myself, say, Lucas, take care of this house, do a better job because one day you're gonna buy it <laughs> and you're gonna wish that you had been better to it all these years. When something is valuable, when something is important, when something matters, you take care of it, you treat it right. And you guys, we believe, and I hope you believe, that what we do here at Fort City, the people that we get to serve, the, the children that we get to teach to pray and teach about Jesus, the, the people that we reach with the message of hope from the greatest story ever told, we believe what we get to do is important. And we gotta take care of it and we have to maintain it and we have to build it so that our kids, the coming generation, inherit a healthy, growing, passionate church and that's reaching people with the message of Jesus. And so today I wanna to invite you to help us take care of the house. Now, not this building I'm standing in, but the ministries and the people that are out there doing the work of Jesus in our community. And so I'm gonna invite you to help build this house, to maintain this house, be part of our ministry here by supporting this ministry financially. And so there's gonna be ways to give on the screen right now, and we would love for you to partner with us financially to give together to see what God can do through Fort City and everybody who calls Fort City their church.
Life is full of in-between moments. That weird period between one thing and the next, where you're in the middle of the transition. You're not where you were, but you're not where you're going either. And these times are full of tension and challenge. Now, I've had a few of these moments in my life, like sitting in a hospital waiting room, waiting on my first son, Justice, to be born. My old life sleeping in and just caring about myself behind me, and my new life of caring for and sacrificing for and loving this new child ahead of me, the tension of the in-between. Or when I was standing at the base of the escalator at the Fort McMurray airport, waiting to meet my second son, years of waiting behind me and so much to discover in front of me. The tension and anticipation of that moment was overwhelming. Now, not all of my in-between moments are beautiful like that. I remember at 19, I had just started working at Suncor and I was looking at maybe buying a place to live. And Adrian, my girlfriend at the time, basically told me that I didn't need to be looking to buy no house until I put a ring on her finger. Our relationship was in that weird in-between place. We'd been dating since grade 10, and, and now I really had to answer the question, was she the one? Should we break the tension of the in-between and commit to our lives to each other? Now, <laughs> I won't say Adrian dragged me kicking and screaming out of that in-between space, but she did gently help me to see that I need to do something about our relationship or risk losing it. And it's Valentine's Day today, so let me tell you a love story. I had decided to ask Adrian to marry me, and it was time to step out of the in-between and into the next stage of our lives. And I bought the ring, I cooked a romantic dinner, and my plan was in motion. Actually, romantic dinner might be a bit of a reach. I lit candles, yeah, that's nice, and I cooked pierogies, which is not so romantic. So, we ate dinner, and everything was going perfectly. We finished and I cleared the table and Adrian started doing the dishes. And this was the moment I had been waiting for. Everything was perfect. And so with her standing at the sink, I got down on one knee. I pulled out the ring and said, Adrian, how would you like to do my dishes for the rest of your life? You guys, spoiler alert, she said yes. And she hasn't done a single dish since. Then came the in-between again. Six months of engagement, not just dating anymore, not yet married, not living together, but spending all of our time together. Engagement's great and everything, but really is just a period of time of waiting until you're married. Today is sort of an in-between kind of Sunday. And we've spent the last six weeks in our new Supernatural Normal series uh, talking about the Holy Spirit and how He wants to empower you to live life to the full. And next week, we're starting a new message series called The Wild Goose. Yes, The Wild Goose, which is a, ter is a term that ancient uh, Celtic Christians used to describe the dangerous, unpredictable, and mystery of the Holy Spirit. And today, we're in between message series. We're not where we've been, and we're not exactly where we're going either. And so today, I want to talk about a guy who knew exactly what it meant to be stuck in the in-between. Someone who could see where he wanted to go, but had to hold on and wait it out in the uncomfortable in-between space. His name is Peter. And Peter was one of Jesus' closest friends. He was just an ordinary guy living an ordinary life until Jesus showed up and changed that forever. And Peter was uh, one of the first disciples Jesus chose to include in his inner circle. Peter would go on to eventually assist Mark in writing the Gospel of Mark. And Peter assisted, because Mark, uh, Peter assisted Mark because it's likely that Peter had never learned to write himself. And so he had to dictate it. Uh, in that time, there wasn't a lot of need for fishermen to learn to read or to write. And Peter was a good man. 
but he was far from perfect. He was quick to act, but wasn't always quick to think. He was a shoot first and ask questions later kind of guy. He was the kind of guy that would give you the shirt off his back and stick up for you in a fight. Now, he was a deeply loyal person, which is why experts guess that he was probably an Enneagram 6, the, a loyalist. You could always count on Peter to speak first, to act first, to punch first, and to be the first one to say, I, I don't get it. When Jesus first asked Peter to follow him, he literally dropped his fishing nets in place and left his whole life behind to follow Jesus. He did not need to be asked twice. Peter was the first person to call Jesus the Messiah. The disciples were all thinking it, but Peter was the only one crazy enough to actually say it out loud. Could this be true? Are you the Messiah? And Peter had a way of putting his foot in his mouth. Like at the transfiguration of Jesus, Jesus brought Peter and James and John along with him to the top of this high mountain when suddenly the sky opens up and Jesus begins to shine as bright as the sun. And it's this beautiful moment where Jesus reveals his true divine nature. And suddenly beside Jesus is Moses and Elijah, and, and start, they all start to have a conversation. And we don't know what they talked about, but I'm sure they were there to inspire Jesus and to give him courage to face his coming suffering. Now in the middle of this beautiful moment, Peter, afraid and confused, wanting to help but not really understanding what's happening, interrupts them. And ask them if he should build them a couple of tents to hang out in. The poor guy really misread the moment. And then when the disciples were caught up in a storm and they were afraid their boat was going to sink, Peter was the one who saw Jesus walking on water. And Peter was the one who stepped out of the boat to go to him. Now Peter was either brave or stupid, maybe both. And at first, because of his faith, Peter was walking on water too. But then he started to overthink things and he became afraid and Jesus had to become a lifeguard and save Peter from drowning. And Peter actually scolded Jesus once. And Jesus was warning his disciples that a day was coming when he would be taken from them, that he would have to give up his life uh, as a sacrifice for many. And this made Peter angry. And Peter grabbed Jesus, pulled him aside and told him, stop talking like that, Jesus. You're wrong. You're scaring everyone. Stop this nonsense. Can you imagine scolding the creator of the universe? Jesus wasn't impressed, and he looked Peter straight in the eyes and said, get behind me, Satan. Oh, that must have stung. Being called Satan by Jesus is the sort of thing you might never forget. And when Jesus was arrested in the garden, Peter was the one who leaped into action. He drew his sword and cut someone's ear off. I mean, I know I don't know much about sword fighting, but I know enough to know that the ear is not a typical target. And Jesus ended up having to scold Peter again. And then it was Peter who boasted that he would never forsake Jesus. All these other guys might turn their backs on you, Jesus, but not me. You can count on me. I'll always be there right by your side. And literally hours later, a young servant girl would ask Peter if he knew Jesus. And Peter would make a big scene, cussing and swearing, denying that he had ever even met Jesus. And after Jesus was killed on the cross, like the other disciples, Peter went into hiding, afraid that everything he believed about his friend Jesus might not be true after all. Peter was a man of action. He did things. He didn't always think things through, but he did them. He didn't wait for nothing. You know, my mom is a lot like Peter. She is not into wasting time. She wants to get things done. And one time she was here sitting in church, right, right over there, and she wasn't really enjoying the message that day. She was bored. 
And so she stood up, looked over at us, and shout whispered, what do you guys want for lunch? (laughs) I'm going to the grocery store. (laughs) I mean, this whole room heard her say that. That is a true story. You can ask Dulcie if you don't believe me. Peter was all about getting things done and not waiting. He didn't like to spend his time in the in-between spaces. And so that's why Jesus' last request to him was one of his least favorite. Jesus had been nailed to a tree. He had been laid down in a tomb. And he gave all humanity hope in his resurrection. And now for 40 days, he was preparing his followers for a time when he would no longer be with them, a time when he wouldn't be there to spell things out for them, when they would have to learn to live and love like him without him right there as an example to follow. Jesus is lucky Peter didn't take him aside again and tell him to stop talking about that nonsense. Then Jesus said something that I know Peter wouldn't have liked. Jesus said, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait. But wait for the gift my Father promised, which you have heard me speak about. Now, I know you want to get out there and start telling people uh, about everything that has happened. I know you want to shout it from the rooftops. I know you want to go and do all the things that I told you you could do, Peter. But wait. Just wait. Don't do it yet. Jesus went on. For John baptized with water. But in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, I like to imagine Peter in this moment. So let me get this straight, Jesus. You want us to just sit around and do nothing? You want us just to sit here and wait for something to happen? For this Holy Spirit to come? I don't think that's a good idea, Jesus. We should strike while the iron's hot. I mean, you were dead and now you're alive. Let's get this party started. And then Jesus was gone. And suddenly... Peter was in between, stuck in stasis. Not who he was yesterday, but not yet who he's meant to be tomorrow. Sitting, waiting, in the in-between. I'm not going to lie to you. I feel this. This rings true for me. I feel like we are stuck in between. The whole world is stuck in the middle between the freedom pre-pandemic and being free to live again. Stuck singing and preaching to an empty room when I miss you guys so much in between the problem and the solution. Like I'm just sitting around waiting for a breakthrough. And maybe you're the same. Maybe you feel this way too in between despair and hope, in between sorrow and joy, in between surviving and thriving, in between what was and what is to come, you feel stuck. And I know why Jesus told Peter and the others to wait. I know why he didn't want them to go on without the Holy Spirit. Jesus knew that they couldn't do it on their own. They couldn't live the life he wanted them to live without his spirit living inside of them. He knew that they could try as hard as they wanted, but without the spirit to empower them, all their talents, all their efforts would be in vain. And so, against his better judgment, Peter waited. He sat tight. He entered into a holding pattern. And he didn't like it, but Jesus had never steered him wrong. And then, one day soon after, Peter was gathered with the others, waiting, when suddenly the walls began to shake. And there was a sound like a roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the whole room. Something was happening. And Peter looked around the room, and he saw what looked like fire resting all around them. And suddenly they all began praising God in different languages that they didn't even know. And Peter didn't know how to read or write. And here he was suddenly praising God in a language that he didn't even know. 
the Holy Spirit had descended and filled these believers. And Peter was amazed and overjoyed and he spilled out to the street and began to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. And he quoted the Old Testament and his friend Jesus and the people were in awe of his words. Peter's words suddenly had power that they had never heard before. And the other disciples, they couldn't believe what they were seeing, that this was the same Peter who always put his foot in his mouth. And now his words are piercing the hearts. And 3,000 people chose to follow Jesus and were baptized because of Peter's preaching that day. Peter, the get behind me Satan guy. Peter, the let me ruin the moment and build you a tent guy. Peter, the chop off someone's ear like a crazy man guy. Peter, the I'll never deny you except for when a little kid scares me guy. The Holy Spirit dragged this ordinary, messy, less than ideal guy out of the in-between and into the future God had always had in store for him. The Holy Spirit empowered Peter to be more, to do more, to experience more than he ever could have imagined on his own. And Peter went on to lead a bold life of faith. He helped lead the early church, early church, and he's one of the reasons Fort City even exists today. He healed the sick, and he baptized new believers, and he changed the world forever. The last six weeks, we've been talking about what it means to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Next week, we're starting a new series about what your life can look like if you have the Holy Spirit with you. We are in between. And where Peter had to wait for the Holy Spirit to come, where Peter was stuck in between waiting for God to move, you do not have to wait. You do not have to wait. A life empowered by the Holy Spirit is available to you right now. A life free of shame is available to you right now. A way out of the in-between that you're stuck in is available to you right now. His name is Jesus. He is the Holy Spirit who comes to set you free and give you life to the full. Don't wait. If you've never decided to follow Jesus, this can be your moment. If you've never invited the Holy Spirit into your life, then that can happen now. If you've been stuck waiting for a way forward, this is it. Follow Jesus. Live in the Spirit. Experience His life for the very first time. My grandma died when I was a teenager. I was really close with her and spent almost every weekend at her place. She made the best powdered chocolate milk and the very best fried eggs. Her name was Martha. Her last few years were tough ones for her. A bunch of different stints in the hospital and then finally pancreatic cancer sent her there for the last time. And near the end, she didn't really have the energy or eyesight to be able to read. And, and, and she wasn't always awake. Uh, most of the time, she was asleep. And my mom tells me about one time when she, my mom gave her a book called In the Light of Heaven by Randy Alcorn. It's a book about the hope of heaven. That for those who follow Jesus, death is not the end. That it is, in fact, just the beginning. And mom was going to read it to her, but grandma was too tired. And so mom left it on the hospital nightstand and kissed her goodnight. And the next morning, mom came back and found grandma sitting up in her bed, eyes wide open, smiling. And she told mom that she woke up in the night and she started reading the book and that she couldn't put it down, that it filled her with peace. And she told mom, God gave me my eyes back so I could read it. Grandma was in between this life and the next, but the Spirit of God was alive and working in her life even still. 
Do you want to know what the Spirit of God can look like in your life? Listen to this. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. It can be yours. Don't wait. Now, in a moment, I am going to pray. And I want you to pray with me. If you've never decided to follow Jesus, then decide to follow him now and pray this prayer with me. If you've never experienced the filling of the Holy Spirit, then pray this prayer with me. And if you've forgotten what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you can pray this prayer with me. If you're stuck in the in-between, then you should pray this prayer with me. Jesus told Peter to wait. But this morning, I believe he is telling you not to. Don't wait. Because he is waiting on you. Let's pray together. Jesus, we thank you that you are willing to use just about anybody, even a bumbling mistaker like a guy like Peter. And there is hope for us. And Jesus, today I ask for those who are watching this service today that you would be close to them. And for those people who have never experienced what it means to follow you, Jesus, meet them in their room right now, wherever they're at. And for those who have never experienced what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus, I ask you to fill them now. And Jesus, for those of us who feel stuck in between, like our life isn't what it is supposed to be. Like we're supposed to be over there and we're not back from where we came from. Jesus, I ask you to help us to get where we're supposed to be. Help us to get out of this in-between space and start living the life that you designed for us to live. And Jesus, I am so thankful that Peter and those guys decided to wait for the Holy Spirit. And I am so thankful that I don't have to wait. That you have invited each one of us to come and experience you and your Holy Spirit and the life that follows. Jesus, we thank you this morning. And I pray that everyone who is engaged with the service today would be blessed and that you would fill our lives to overflowing. Pray this in your holiest of names. Amen.
His goodness is running after you. You know, for a guy uh, who seemed to put his foot in his mouth more often than not, Peter really went on to do some really amazing things. And you can too. Years after that day when the Holy Spirit rushed into his life, Peter sat down to dictate some of his thoughts and have someone write them down for him. And this is what he said. For you are a chosen people. You are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of the darkness and into his wonderful light. Pretty good words from a guy who Jesus nicknamed Satan, isn't it? He's called you from darkness into light, from hurting to healing, from the in-between to the glorious life of his spirit living within you. You guys, I am glad that you were here today. Have a great week, and I pray that this week you experience his goodness. Thanks for worshiping with us today. We are glad you're here. If you're new here, we would love to hear from you. We have a form at fortcitychurch.info. If you fill it out, somebody would love to connect with you. And don't forget, we have Kid City happening on Zoom. So if you have kids, click that link in the comments to join the Zoom group. We would love for you to be there. It's been great worshiping with you today. Thank you for being here. Have a great day.